You got yourself a CPU at a great price. When it finally got to you, you noticed some of those pins were bent. Well, we're gonna look at a couple of options you have at actually bending those pins back into shape and it won't cost you a dollar, not a dime. You're not gonna wanna miss today's episode, so stay right there, we'll be right back. However you bought it, either offer up Craigslist, eBay, whatever, it got to you, some of those pins were bent. Well, as long as they're bent, you could fix bent pins, you could fix broken pins. Now, you've seen people use flux, maybe by any chance, that actually uh, bonds the uh, pins back to the substrate of the CPU. But there's other ways. You could fix a broken pin also, believe it or not. Uh, well, not fixing, but getting around. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in the video what we're going to need. Of course, you're gonna need a motherboard. Whoops, that's an AM4 uh, CPU, AM4 socket. Does a motherboard work? Yes, we done checked the motherboard. But as you can tell, there's no power supply, RAM, graphics card, nothing right here right now, because that's not what we're focused on. We're not trying to get this thing to boot. Not yet. We're focusing on getting the uh, pins actually straight on the CPU. Next, what you'll need is some type of magnifying glass or some glasses. You can hit the dollar store. I prefer these over a magnifying glass because you can just leave them on and you're done. You're not sitting there at hands and you're finished. You know what I mean? Strongest ones you could get and that's gorgeous, beautiful. Let your hands free to do what they need to do. A flashlight, something so you can see really well. If you could purchase one of those metal dome housings at like Walmart for a couple dollars and throw a good LED bulb in there, do it. Get it, set it up somewhere above your workstation, wherever you're planning to fix the CPU. You're gonna get a lot of good light, but have a flashlight just in case. A knife is great because the blade itself is really thin. The channels that the pins run along, they're, they got a pretty good size gap between them and a blade definitely fits between them. If you could get a razor blade, that's even better. If you have an iFixit case like this one, uh, this one has a lot of good tools in here that we could use. This little pry tool, pretty thin, and you got good control over it. And all these things are ESD safe. So you don't have to worry about sending a voltage through your body to the pins. Now, should you wear a ESD bracelet? Yeah, I mean, this would be a good time to do that. I know a lot of channels show that parts are resilient nowadays. If you have luck like mines, you'll touch it in the one trillion spot that's no good and zap, it's gone. I would recommend an ESD bracelet because we're not building a PC. We're fixing PC components here. Quick disclaimer, your pins may not be bent as bad as the pins on this CPU, or they may be bent worse. So we're gonna start with the easiest way to the hardest way. Basically, if your pins aren't that bad, the first routine that we're gonna do, the first fix we're going to do, is the way you probably wanna go. And if yours is worse, then the last way is the way we're going to wanna go. So we're gonna go through all of these, starting with the easiest. Let's first take a look at how bad the pins are actually bent. As you can see right here, this is where our bends are. This one's not too bad. This one's, uh, but there's one behind it you can't see from this angle that's pre bent pretty badly. Let's see if we could get a better look at it. Maybe from this angle you could see it a little bit better. But right here, you see how they're curling over? But these are pretty straight right here, except for that edge too. I got a few more, I think are a little bent here, but that's not too bad. So these right here will go with the first uh, fix we're gonna go with. We have a few that are not too bad. There's a few that's pretty bad, but they're all there. So I think we could fix this. Get something like this that has a very thin blade on it. That way it could fit in between the lanes. Now we know our pins are bent at the far corner over here, but what we're gonna wanna do is start at the start of the lane, try to get in there best as you can, follow the lane till you get to those pins and then just ever so gently tweak it in the direction you need, up. Go down each lane that the pins are bent, lightly, you don't wanna put too much pressure, 
and bend in that direction you need. Then what you're gonna do is go down the opposite way, the other lane that is bent, come in and do that again. And just keep going down the lanes and bending in the direction of that lane, in the direction that you need it to be straightened. If you do it and you notice that they're bent too far and that tool is not working, because you can see here, those are still bent right there in the corner. We're now gonna move on to something a lot more solid than the pry tool. Now, when you're running it across the lane, do not put pressure down onto the, uh, the CPU because you don't wanna hurt anything. You just wanna run it down the lane lightly, get to the point you need to and just start and then come down the other way and keep doing it like that. So I'm gonna do it real fast, my best I can while on camera, because this is very hard. I don't know how a lot of people do it on camera, but I'm gonna do my best, but I don't wanna hurt my CPU either. Yeah, those are bent really badly. Oh, this blade's pretty fat actually. So as you can see, yes, it could be very daunting of a task to do, but at the same time, if you take your, what? <laughs> if you take your time and you just go really slowly with this process, you will be able to bend those pins back to where you could put them back in the socket where they're to that 10, 15%, like as if they were not that bent that badly, put them in the socket, bring down the bar, that will fully straighten them out. Well, not fully because they're bent, so now they're gonna have a little bit of, they're, they're gonna be a little warped, which is not a problem. That's not gonna stop it from doing its job. Your options now are find another CPU, uh, something that's uh, PGA, that's pin grid array, something that has pins on it, and it's broken, of course, so it would be a donor CPU and you could take off some good pins off of that. How you would do that? Uh, Linus Tech Tips did do a video on it. I'll link that video down below. It involves a material called Flux and some screens. If you're not confident enough to do the Flux, you do have another option. You could put the CPU in with the missing pins. What will happen then? Either it'll post or it won't, but that depends. So some of these pins are for future maybes. There's a lot of CPU generations out there that a lot of the pins don't do anything. They just never were able to accomplish whatever they thought they might accomplish. It's like reserve, basically. Now, some of these pins are grounds. So you might get away with a broken pin or two. What can happen? Say your PC boots pins are broken, you put it in anyways because you have none to lose at that point, and the PC boots. What might you see on the screen? You might see nothing. It might read the CPU as it is, how many cores, how many threads, the clock speed. It might read all the RAM, everything normal. You'll look and go, wow, there's nothing wrong here, and you're fine. But there's a flip side to that. Of course, it might not post, it might not boot, it might be over with. Or in the BIOS, it might not register all your RAM. It may lose some of its functionality, but not all its functionality. But if you're using this computer for rendering blenders and rendering UE5 and you do this for money, this is your income, then I would suggest put it to the side or see if somebody will trade you or give you some cash for it and move that cash towards a brand new working CPU. If you can really check the CPU before you purchase it secondhand, I suggest you really, really look at it. Bring a motherboard, a power supply, some RAM, a graphics card, whatever, just to see it post. If the person wants to meet you at Starbucks, hey, that's fine too but I want you to bring flashlights, magnifying glasses. I want you to bring everything you need to see those pins. If they see you walk in with all this stuff and they get all antsy or something, walk away. Don't make an argument about it. Don't sit there going tit for tat. It's not worth it. This person is trying to pull something. If 
they bring it to you in a little baggie like this, more than likely you're gonna have bent pins. You wanna see it transported in its original packaging. This makes sure the pins are up and above the plastic. It has a little spot for your fingers to go in so you grab it by the substrate and you don't grab it by the pins. So if you see it in a baggie like this, you're, you should already be at like 75% red alert. And then if you bring out your stuff to look at it and the person starts you know, getting a little weird about it, at that point, thank you very much for your time. I'm gonna get myself a, an iced mocha cappuccinos or whatever it is you order at those Starbucks and bounce. Now, usually I don't buy bent pins, but it's sitting there on the edges. I'm not really too worried about it. Once the camera's off, I'm gonna be able to just focus on fixing this and major props to the guys out there that do that. I don't know how you guys do that with lights like this on you cause it gets a little warm. So I was able to actually straighten them out enough to a day would go inside the socket and bring the arm down and straighten them out. So moment of truth. This is where we're gonna see if it works. We're going to start by putting in our brand new used fixed CPU. Here we go. Oop. And it is good. So now that we have our CPU installed, let's start installing other items. Let's apply some thermal compounds. Uh, we're not hooking up a hard drive because we don't need it. So now that all that's installed, let's pick one of the graphics cards. Let's plug in our HDMI. So there's our processor. Here's the speed it's running at, uh, DDR2133. Uh, that's one stick of eight gig. There it is showing in A1, the first slot of uh, CPU temp. Motherboard temp, there you have it. It works. We were able to straighten out the pins and we able to get it to post, which is great because we know now that the CPU works perfectly fine. I really hope we gained, uh, we gained a subscriber. We're really trying to hit that thousand mark. So please do us a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment down below. Was you able to straighten the pins on the CPU and what was some of the drawbacks? What happened when you finally booted it? Did you have a similar issue with RAM? This is maybe the third CPU I did this with, and I don't remember if that happened before. But anyways, thanks again for watching. See you guys on the next one. Later, guys.